I'm Father Rob Jack, and I'm the host of Driving Home the Faith on Sacred Heart Radio. I'm on the air Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. at 7.40 a.m. and 9, 10 a.m. It's a pleasure to be with you and to talk to you about the faith, especially to about Jesus Christ. Because when we get to our faith, the centrality of everything we do is based on who Jesus is and what Jesus asks of us and what Jesus does for us. We get those three right, usually we're going to be heading in the right direction. It doesn't mean it's easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. So last time we talked about the kerygma, the basic proclamation of Jesus, the attention getter or the hook, you know, and we heard the first part of that, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Part two deals with now, reform your lives. See, now that sounded pretty good in the first part. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Something new, something that may free us up, something that may bring us joy or make us rich. But now he turns it around and says, okay, you want this kingdom? Reform your lives. In the Greek, it's metanoeta. Metanoeta, I guess is a better way. It means metanoia is a word for repentance. It means that if you want to be in this kingdom, you need to be living rightly. Now, what does right living mean? Well, for us, it deals with a question of morality. And we have the lawgiver who is God, and we see that God has given through Moses the law, the Ten Commandments, and that the rabbis have looked at that and expanded and contracted parts of that in their understanding. And so to be a good faithful Jew, you follow the law and the precepts of the law. And the scribes and the Pharisees help people to proclaim that law and explain that law. But there's more to the law than what was written on the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. And there's more to the law than the Talmud and the Midrash and all the different commentaries of the rabbis and scribes all throughout history. Reform your life means listen to the voice of Christ and follow his path. And what's the path of Jesus to reform our life? To turn away from sin. And sin, sin, by its definition, is an affront to the law of God. It's to contradict the law that God has given us. It's given us free will. We can choose to follow him. Or we can choose to reject him. We look at the scriptures. We see there's great benefits to following the Lord. There's blessings. There's opportunities. There's challenges. But if we disobey the Lord, we see also there's consequences and there's more suffering. And sometimes there's slavery, and if that sin is serious enough, it'll lead to death. And so Jesus says, in order to understand who this kingdom is, you're going to have to change your lives. You're going to have to change your way of thinking about God and about the world and about yourself. Which is the hardest to change, God, the world, or yourself? The answer to that is yes. All three are hard to change. But especially the third one, to repent in our own heart. Because we have decisions we make every day, and we choose between good and evil. That which will lead us to God, that which is faithful to God, and that which tends to be faithful to ourselves, and oftentimes disruptive of others. Those are the two options we have. And some will say, well, there's a middle thing in there where you kind of do it and you kind of don't do it. Doesn't matter. You're still, it's a venial sin in that case. Huh? But we're still not fully carrying out God's word. And that takes time. And that takes also a lot of exterior help. Jesus knows we can't do it on our own. He lays out the path, but then he says what? Well, we read in Matthew chapter 11, Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. I will show you the way. And when we look to Matthew's gospel, we'll see the way is oftentimes most clearly expressed in the Sermon on the Mount, which is, of course, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, all the way to chapter 7. I think it's 28. But in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gives us the meaning of that repentance. But the clear thing is, is to turn to God if we turn only to ourselves, it's a dead end. If we turn to others, we might get a little bit farther, but usually we'll end up getting cheated and abandoned. Just the nature of our fallen world. But if we turn to Christ, 
we'll have a better path. Doesn't mean we're going to have a happy path. We're definitely not going to have an easy path. Because in the midst of all this, there's a lot of people who, when we live out that path of Christ, which is a path of love, a path of mercy, a path of compassion, but also a path that is rooted in reality, not in our own delusions or the delusions of the world. Jesus has come to destroy all of those delusions and those temptations that the devil has been planting ever since the fall of our first parents. And so to reform our life says, my life is not yet good enough. You see, there is a book, oh, 20-some years ago called A Good Enough Catholic, and I wrote a commentary, and I said it was neither good nor enough, because a good enough Catholic basically means, I'll just say it, a half-assed Catholic. That's what it is. It's halfway. And Jesus teaches us many things, but one of them is not do it halfway. That's the human way. That's the way we do it. Ah, we'll do it till it starts to infringe on me when it hurts. Ah, we won't do it anymore. Yeah, we don't need half-assed Christianity anymore. And you think, well, why are you saying half-assed? Because I want to get your attention with that. Because we do it. We do a lot of half-assed things, halfway, mediocre. And you know, in the eight beatitudes, there's not one blessed or the mediocre. The Lord is asking us to live an excellent life, to follow an excellent path. It's not an easy one, but boy, is it a fruitful one. Boy, does it really help you in your life. And so to me, repent means to change your life and to follow Christ. And when we do that, we're going to be able to live in that kingdom of God more fully and enjoy all the gifts and benefits that's there for us. If you found this video today helpful, I encourage you to click the like button at YouTube, and that way you can get notifications whenever we happen to make a new one. And may Almighty God bless you today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.